What's the deal, everybody? It's your boy, Kenny. We back again. It is 2023. We had a really good 2022 with a lot of amazing talent that came through the doors of Conversations with Kenny. But I told you guys that the new year is going to bring new people, new conversations, and interesting folks that are doing amazing things in the world. Um, we do cover a lot of pro wrestling here. We do cover a lot of um, like MMA stuff. But I want to dive into other things that I'm very interested in. And one of the things is that a lot of people know or may not know is that I love to buy sneakers. Now, it is hard for me at times to buy sneakers due to my size, but uh, this uh, infatuation that I've grown to uh, love in the last couple of months in the sneaker game has brought my attention and brought my interest to our next guest. He owns a uh, sneaker company called Heavenly Kicks. If you do not follow this guy, once you hear his story and you get to know him a little bit better, I guarantee you, just like myself, you are going to uh, jump on his YouTube channel. You're going to at least watch a couple of videos once a day and wonder whether or not if you are going to uh, meet up with him one day and buy a pair of sneakers or do I really need those pair of sneakers. So without further ado, let's get your man Heavenly Kicks in the building. What is the yeah. deal, my brother? What's good? What's good? How you doing? I'm I'm good, man. Like I like I said in the intro, um, you know, we we like to dive in in conversations with Kenny. We like to dive into like different things that interest sure. me that I may think that other people might be interested in. And uh, a lot of people that I know are really into um, buying sneakers and collecting sneakers and stuff, you know. And when I asked them, I said, you know, why did they get into this? You know, into collecting sneakers. They just said they love it. Me, sneakers. I like just. Yeah there's, yeah, there's certain there's certain sneakers, there's certain sneakers that I really like. And there's other ones that I'll look at them and say to myself, like, Dwarf, mm, I, I can I can pass on this. But you for you, sure, took, for sure. you you took your love for sneakers and made it into a business. Um, where where did that decision come from where you said, you know what, I'm gonna take my love for for collecting and turn it into a business? Um, so well, like it all, it all kind of started back like when I was um like in college, um, I went to school out there. So while I was um, playing basketball, well, when I first got to college, that, that was the first time like I was able to have a job because my parents, you know, was against me. Because, you know, I had to make sure I was on the honor roll, you know, while playing sports, you know, that mm -hmm. took up like all of my time. So with that being said, like once I got to college, I had like an on cap of my money you know, because I was on scholarship and then I, I had the opportunity, one of like the, friend, one of my, you know, lifelong friends now that I met at, at school, I was younger, but you, you know, my family wasn't really fortunate enough to, you know, or my mother just wasn't willing to, you know, buy me $200 <laughs> shoes all the time. Right. So I, I didn't owe money and I didn't really have you no know, bills at the school, you know, you ate at the cafeteria you know i had somewhere to sleep i took my money and i started buying shoes and like it got like every weekend i'm going to buy a new pair of shoes you know mm -hmm. we were driving down to wichita buying a new pair of shoes every weekend and by the time i got home after my freshman year of college i had you know so i, I went pretty crazy in my first year and my mother she told me, she was like, what am I going to do with all the sneakers? And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not to spend it like trading or selling the ones I had to buy the new ones I wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and while doing that, I started seeing that I was having like, like a little bit of profit. Um, that you seen the growth where I'm at now, but I never, I never really imagined like, you know, being a YouTuber or a, a full time sneaker reseller i was planning on doing doing this and uh my family you know owns a plumbing company so i, I was planning on working a regular job and mm -hmm. and you know just flipping the shoes on the side you know what I'm saying just if i can make a little extra but because of covid covid happened so um i was sitting home early from school and and while i was doing that i ended up making you know a decent amount on a profit a day I was supposed to go back to school to, to 
to um, go get my master's and play my last year of college ball. I had made a certain amount that I thought that if I had the same amount, why would I, you know, stop doing what I'm doing now? Like my business is thriving. So, and ever since that, that I've been full throttle. So that, that was what, 2020? Mm -hmm. At first it was a little part-time, but after that I took it and from one shoe, you know, you see what I do now. So, so what was the first shoe you got to flip? Uh, my first shoe that I flipped. Uh, so my first shoe that I flipped like reselling wise was, was probably out of my closet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so uh, uh, I don't know if people remember, but um, the like alternate twelve, it was the like like the um, the half red, half half white twelves. Um, mm -hmm. I took those and I posted that. Actually, I resold my first pair of shoes on, on our school email, school wide email, and then somebody ended up buying it off to me. So that was my first shoe that I ever flip you know which got me started into reselling oh man so then after that you kind of just said to yourself like you know i got something here let me go in and get a couple of more pairs and see how how that goes and it just pretty much took off from there yeah yeah like yeah like i was you know like from the get like you know from where i started out i just wanted to see like how far could it you know really go and while i was at the house and i actually started putting in footwork i'm like own business and mm -hmm. once i started to see like oh like okay you're pretty, pretty good at what you're doing like let's see if it'll work out and within mm -hmm. you know those six months it's showing money um then the next year after because that was supposed to be my master years i asked my parents to give me one year staying at home and and like I was like, you know, I know about like the sneaker world. You got to be at those malls, at all the places early and stuff like, like that. I used to drive about seven hours a day in a car around wow. the whole city or straight. So, and that's how I was like, you know, grinding and build my business to what it is now. Now, in your videos, you like I see you on a lot of like sneaker events, you know, um whether it's in your hometown of houston or um you know you you go to like la you'll you'll go to florida and stuff like that where a lot of these conventions are in new york as well yeah. um like one of the things that like for me i was always i'm always thinking is like when you go to these um you know events like how do you price your sneakers after you get them from the next person okay so like for me uh, um so at first like before um this year i only used to buy all my shoes retail so i never paid mm -hmm. a resale for shoes um i um just because of the fact of, of uh my guy mellow if you hear me talk about him in mm -hmm. the video uh which does, does like all of our camera work um you know like was telling me like you know like you could really do something with, with it so i was like well for me to be able to make content, like I have to buy shoes mm -hmm. and from like to just buy from the store. Like, like I could have just recorded, you know, like run, running around the city, but that's to be honest, is not sustainable. You know what I'm saying? Right. You wear you out. We decided to start doing, going to the, the conventions because I was going to the conventions to sell my sneakers. Mm -hmm. So I went from just selling my sneakers to now, now well we'll just go around and try and i find found out that i'm pretty good at selling and, and having good customers shout out to all my customers who definitely shop with me um you know they respect me to my craft and they're willing to pay you know a little bit more premium price just because mm -hmm. they can guarantee that they can always get in contact with me um the shoe i'll take care of it you know like mm -hmm. that's that's one thing about me customer service is like one of my biggest things so that 
that's why a lot of people, I have a lot of returning customers. They really do, do appreciate you. Know, so what I do is basically when I'm going to the conventions, I understand the shoes that sell well for me, you mm -hmm. know, what might be different for somebody else, but I understand what sells great I and you know bulk at tables which allows me to get a little bit of a better price than paying a full market value of a shoe so like if it's a shoe is like at 400 I may buy bulk then I, I can go around and then sell the shoe for market or you know market plus fees if I have to you know do you know a little bit more for my customer that's really um, how, that's really how, you know, the conventions and the cash and out at conventions for me, you know, evolved. So with the, with the clientele that you have, that you've been, you've been growing, right. Um, what is like the mm -hmm. hardest size that you can say that is like hard to get? Uh, um, hard to get probably um, like the hardest to get. Like I know you saw talking about in the intro you say your um your size is hard to get what what size would that be for you oh, oh, i'm i'm a size 14 14 which um you know a lot of people who shop with us understand like for me i carry 14 14s all the time so i always have uh, uh, at least one pair of 14s in stock shoes as well and it's hard to find them because um usually when a shoe releases, it's only mm -hmm. like one fourteen that drops at each store, and it has to even get a fourteen. Um, mm -hmm. So we do, we do carry fourteens all the time because I know people who have bigger foot, knee shoes, mm -hmm. NBA players, football players, bigger size. So, so I we even carry up to a fifteen in some shoes. Mm -hmm. right. Like no, we don't have the same selection that we have for smaller sizes, but I always try to, I might not have what you want right now. I can go look for it, but I can give you and give you an option at this point in time, you know, just in case if you need something, you know, you know that day. Um, but big sizes are definitely the harder, hardest to find. And, you know, the sneaker game has changed from, probably about like three to four years, years ago when the mm -hmm. money size nines, like those used to be like the hardest to get mm -hmm. now, because I feel like America is starting to dominate like the shoe market, the very more popular, like size 10 and a half, 10 or 10 and a half and up like 10 and a half, 11, you know, mm -hmm. 11 and a half, 12, 13, 14 who go the go to sneaker events that only carry size 13 and 14 and still do pretty solid numbers okay so with with, with that I'm a, my follow-up question is what is the hardest shoe to get right now hardest shoe to get right now is is a is a ton of them because they do is out there that you know a lot of regular people probably can't get their hands on just because they're like friends and family mm -hmm. or, you know, didn't release, but some people got pro, uh, pro realistically, it, it's very, very hard. Cause it's so, so many, but like a, a GR shoe as of right now, now that's probably a little harder to touch probably dropped like, like, you know, four or five years ago, they're starting to become mm -hmm. a little bit more rare, rare like you're starting to see them less and less, less. um mm -hmm. but majority any shoe that drops on a release and not an exclusive release you're able to find it all the time and even the ex exclusive shoes they're starting to make a great quantity of them so like you can you you see them all the time even though it's not as, as many pairs as you know like your regular retro jordan Taxi one or something that you might still still find at Foot Locker. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Um, let's see. Well, I'm going through my notes here. So with the sneaker events that, that gotcha. go around, right? Because I'm I'm new 
when it comes to these events because I I knew there were sneaker events, but I didn't know that there were so many. So, so many, for yeah. a rookie, yeah. So for a rookie going in, not as a Okay. Not as a seller, not as a seller, but as a buyer, what piece of advice would you give somebody like myself who wants to attend these sneaker events? So uh, some advice I would give you, especially when it comes to like even buying for yourself or if you want to buy to resell, you know, like at the end of the day for me, like, well, you know, like that's why I do it, um, you know, like with the YouTube. Um, some advice I would give you first is. Never, never, uh, this is for, you know, the price that you were looking to pay, you know what I'm saying, you know, something that you came in there exactly looking for. If you find a price that you was willing to pay, just go, because one thing about, about those events, you might be like, okay, okay, this one person has it. You walk around to the other, see if anybody else has it for, for a better price. You come back, shoes gone. Happens all, right. all the time. You know? It happens to them all the time. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to go shop around. And then they come back. And, and then they want to tell me, like, they'll pay me even more. Yeah, you know, but the shoe's gone. Like, it's nothing that I... But, but also, when it comes to negotiating with, you know, shoes and prices, one thing I tell people, um, you know, never, never give your best. Because at the end of the day, you have to see what somebody else is willing to you know, give you. Right. So like, just, to, you know, just, just to start out, it's not like you're trying to get over, over on them, but some, because it's their shoe. If they want to sell it at this price, they can sell it at that price. But some people also understand, well, some, somebody might not come pay the pay your offer, you mm-hmm. know? So if, especially if you ask me with my offer, if I'm willing to spend 250 if that's my max dollar, you know, I, I want to start the negotiation because then they give me a room to where, you know, at the end of the day, we both are working, you know? So it's like, I'm coming up, you're coming, you're coming down, you mm-hmm. know, we can meet in the middle sometimes because they just want to move the shoe or they got right. it for a great price or they had it too long. You just never know the situation. So when you're all when you're buying a shoe, you want to try to get as necessarily asking those questions. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to ask a person like, "What did you buy this shoe for?" Because now you're like right. trying to check what, what what their pockets are. But if I'm, I'm looking to spend like 180 on this shoe, he can tell you like, "Nah, uh, I'm not. I can't do that." That so mm-hmm. if they already start their conversation off like I can't do that okay so you got to work a little better with them you know what I'm saying you can you just got to fill out the conversation a lot of negotiation mm-hmm. is um really your um, read and hear you know the message outside of what we're saying you, you got to feel mm-hmm. the conversation and where it's going so that's some advice I definitely to an event um, if you're trying to go to any event, like especially when it comes to sneakers, mm-hmm. I definitely suggest you, you know what I'm saying, sneaker con is the place to go. So it's like, you know, like the, the mecca of shoes. They're, like they're original, you know, originally from New York and everything. So mm-hmm. like it's right now, hands down, the best show. They're running the game when it comes to sneaker shows. Um, it's always good to, you know, check out some of your local events. Um, right. But if, if you're looking for grails, you usually don't get people who bring out, out very expensive shoes at smaller mm-hmm. local shows. You know, it's very rare. But at SneakerCon, everybody want to put on their best show. You know, it's prime okay. time. That's that's the time where people going to wear some of their most expensive sneakers. Sneakers, they, you know, like that's the show. So it's basically, it's basically advice, like the Super Bowl you, of sneakers. Yes, it is the is definitely the Super Bowl of sneakers. And even, even if you don't go to buy a shoe, mm-hmm. if you like sneakers, if you love, love like even the street to see like like 
everything that's going on, you know? So I remember mm -hmm. my first sneaker con I, I went to when I started selling, I used to watch videos and like, whoa, it's crazy. But once mm -hmm. I got there at first, but now, you, you know, it's a, it's a regular thing for me. Okay. I have to ask, where did the coin flip come from? Uh, uh, so, like, I know a lot, a lot of the people probably like have done coin flips in their videos. Mm -hmm. um, right. The coin, the coin flip for me, right, is more of, of just to be able to have. Like, I, I, I genuinely enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy having fun. Like, I have fun. 24 7 you know if you mm -hmm. ask any of my people they're gonna tell you like going 24 7 you know even when like we're not on camera or doing nothing like that's mm -hmm. just who i am um the coin flip started where it, it was a thing for business per se like yes it brings great great content but also at the same time i love doing coin flips if i could i I'd do a coin flip every transaction Right. Because at the end of the day, at any other number I ever choose for a coin flip, I'm always willing to pay either way. Or if I'm selling this shoe and doing a coin flip, if it sells for that price, if I take it, I'm willing. But I just like it, to, you know, give people different opportunities. Sometimes mm -hmm. it just give people opportunity to feel like you got to win that day. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I lose coin flip to one of my my losing streaks, but I was on like a, a nine losing streak on coin flips. Like it's crazy. Yo, but there was, at uh, the yeah. same time, like I enjoy it. Yeah, because there were times where like I'm looking at videos and you're like, yo, let's do the coin flip. And I in my mind I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, the last two videos that I seen him do this, he was lost. He gotta get the W on this one. And then there's another L and I'm just like, man, he's gonna keep going. Yeah. Like and then, like yeah. you know, five more minutes into the video, you're doing another coin flip, and I'm just like, man, this this guy, man. Hey, it's it's not nonstop. Like at the end of the day, I'm I'm will I'm willing to risk company. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, pe people enjoy it. Like you know, now coin flips have really become a thing. With you know, like now when I go to these sneaker events, you know, my old, you mm -hmm. know who I am and who my business is. And when we're close on a number, guess what? They tell me, oh, let's do a coin flip. You know what I'm saying? Like, so right. that, that's unique about, about like what we're doing, you know? And people like doing coin flips against me. So, hey, hey I'm, hey, like I'm telling people now, I'll challenge anybody to any coin flip. Let's get it. <laughs> now, you, you've also done something that to me I, I like i was laughing when when you did it and you said it in one of your videos i think your last video you said it's like somebody came to you and did this and it started to catch on it's not something that is typically done to verify a sneaker but when you did that when you did this like yo it sounds good i i had to take my sneakers out and, and do this really quick I was in I was I was in tears because I said, okay, that's not gonna tell oh, wow. you that a sneaker is real or not, but it's 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 yeah. fucking genius. <laughs> so really what so really what came about that? So I don't know if you guys um you know have is a or any um I'm not for sure the exact name of his YouTube videos, right? Uh huh. But he calls out like a lot of resellers, like basically on like they're like they're scamming people or you know, uh -huh. know like fake legit checking shoes and like all that type of stuff. So when when I did it, it was like basically um just like in light of the situation, just because everybody like, at the end of the day, my thing is we people are gonna make mistakes. We're human at the end of the day, you know. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is a legit checker, a fake is going to get past. You might not have seen, like things happen. Right. So when I started to do that, I was just doing it like making something random, you know, you know like that really mm -hmm. people don't do for legit checking shoes. At the gym this morning and a guy came up to me and he was telling me, he was like, yeah, I'd be clapping my, 
my sneakers now <laughs> to like actually legit check them. And then oh, one of man. the, the uh, is a store owner that I, I I do it all the time to make sure the shoes legit. Mm -hmm. and, and like I was just doing it to, to make you know light of the situation, right? But it's a hey, I thankful to the people. That's very that's very <laughs> funny that you brought that up. up. Like it's, it's very crazy. Like I was yeah. I was dying laughing too. Because 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 not for nothing. Like I've seen people like you know. Uh, check sneakers to see if, you know if they're fakes or not, and yeah. and then when you when you did that, you know there was two things going to my mind. I was like, this has to be a joke, and two, if this is real and this is how he's really checking sneakers, like I need to know more, um, more <laughs> about the this technique when yeah. it comes nah. when it comes about the <laughs> technique, right? Because I I found it very entertaining, and that's like one of the things that I love about your your YouTube channel is that you keep everyone entertained because. You know, you see so many different YouTube channels that uh, cover sneakers, and there's only a few that I've seen where you guys like sprinkle in the normal sneaker content, but then you guys sprinkle in some entertainment where it, it keeps the person either coming back to for more or we're going to continue watching the whole entire video to the end. Yeah. And that's one thing about. Um, like even when I'm YouTube, uh, I know a lot of people, you know, because it is a entertainment, a lot of people do for, mm -hmm. for entertainment. Um, uh, me personally, I tried, I like everything genuine, like mm -hmm. anything that you see in any of my videos, when it comes to buying something, stuff is accurate. Like, like I've never, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, said I spent this amount of money money and then spend it or, or I bought these shoes and didn't really buy like just did a skit like I, I personally but like for me I wanted everything about my channel to be authentic you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. everything you guys see is just like who I am and what I'm you know what I'm doing and what I'm about. I just wanted people to feel you know have, have, have a good laugh you know at the mm -hmm. end of the day like I, I still I do the cashing out even if we we wasn't on camera, but mm -hmm. now that we're on camera, you know, I want the people, you know, enjoy the video because at the end of the day, you want to watch something that is entertaining to watch. You don't just right. want to just hear somebody say, okay, I bought this sneaker. Boom. I, people right. want to build like, like a connection to like, oh yeah, like, like oh, I know something about, about you. And like, even mm -hmm. as I continue to grow, like, especially for this year you know even more ab about me and you know like how like who i'm personally am you know right so just so they they can build that connection and, and you know like when people come up to me like anybody who has ever seen my video or come up to me like i i love that you know i love to build that connection and be able to chop it up with people all the time okay so we're we're wrapping up here. I don't want to take up too gotcha. much of your time. So I got some some rapid fire questions. I just have four. Oh. There you go. No, you got. I'm back. See, <laughs> I got four rapid fire questions for you to answer. First thing that comes to your mind, just shoot it out. Uh, favorite gotcha. fa favorite shoe. Uh, favorite shoe is Pantone Elevens. Worst shoe. Worst shoe is the Satan shoes. Hmm. Um, dream shoe. Um, dream shoe that I still want is the Okay. And last but not least, the overrated shoe of the year. Overrated shoe probably would say the Me personally, the I'm my fours. Like a, mm -hmm. a lot of people love them. You, you know, like that's just not my, my style. Like mm -hmm. I feel like it's a great shoe. Like it is a great together put together shoe. But the hype that that shoe did draw that were you know hands down above above it. But it was still like considered in a, a lot of people's list for like the shoe of the year 
mm-hmm. which I felt like it was a, you know, of, you know, sneaker drops. So, and I'm, this year is about to, you know, be even crazier. So, um, I'm out for is definitely for me, me was like the most overrated, uh, crazy for them. But with everybody having so much hype for them, I don't see that many people wearing them. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I feel it's overrated too. And then it lives up to the hype. Everybody wears that shoe, like lost and found, you know. Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to, to actually so, get a pair of lost and found, so. Retail? Yeah, retail? Yeah, no, no, it was it was retail. I was I was I was so lucky. Oh, I was just like, oh shit! I actually I actually got it for the retail price because I was I was thinking I was like, if I don't get these, because I'm the type that like I buy sneakers, but I only go for something that I really want when it's that Christmas season. Gotcha. And I and I looked and I seen. Yeah, and I was like, sure. okay, this has yeah. to be the. This is my Christmas shoe. Gotcha. And I waited on three different websites for like three hours, and they just kept. You know, you're on, you're on, uh, on in a queue, and I was like uh, sitting there thinking, like, I'm not gonna get this shoe. And then, sure enough, it was my turn in the queue. I went for my size. They it did an error message, and then it refreshed, and then the sizes came back up again. And then I hit it again, and then everything went through. And I was like, okay, God was on my side. Let's get this. Yeah. Thing. But I, but I've yet to worry yet because the weather here in New York is horrible, and I don't want to ruin these sneakers. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, like like up north or the east coast is yeah. you definitely gotta wait, you know, your time to wear your sneakers. You know, but like me, I haven't hit I haven't hit a retail pair, um, especially any lost and founds. I didn't get any mm-hmm. of those for retail. So but, but mm. no, I'm glad you was able to get those. I'm still still looking for my size in a ten and a half. I didn't handle like two two or three to sell it, so Damn. So we we like I said, we're wrapping up now. So where can people find you that listen to the show that want to know more about sneakers or even buy some sneakers from you? Definitely, you guys can check me out on YouTube at Heavenly Kicks with a Z. Um, Instagram as well. Uh, we also have TikTok that's been doing pretty good. All of those shop sneakers. You guys can go to my website at Heavenly Kicks. With a Z.com. We also sell on our Instagram as well. We, we do like, we post shoes like once we, we get them, like on shoes, definitely tap into the Instagram because it's probably going to get posted on our story like soon, like the same day as we buy it. Mm-hmm. And then it will get posted to our website. Like, like, okay. So guys, that's it. This is the first episode of Conversations with Kenny in the in the new year. Uh, tune in to more conversations, more unique people, more funny stories as the as the year goes on. Uh, shout outs to Ringside Collectibles. They are our sponsor for this episode. Use the code word, the call up to save 10 percent on all your future action figure orders. Uh, shout outs to the Dirty Heels, the Running Podcast, the Knuckleheads Network, uh, the Circle Debate, Heavenly Kicks for coming on to the show and the Jabba Tia podcast for always helping us out sure. here over on uh, Conversations with Kenny. And guys, remember that you are the the writer, the director, the star of your own journeys. Don't let anyone stop you from achieving your dreams. Continue to push and strive for bigger and better things. Guys, until next time, I'm out of here.